All right, guys, so for this assignment, we're going to be creating a CD cover for a real or imaginary uh, musical artist. And we are gonna start by downloading an image from Google Images. Now, Google Images basically obviously gives you access to the internet, and the internet is full of good things and bad things. So don't expect that your first attempt is going to be necessarily successful. It may be, it may not be. Um, Years of doing this has taught me lots of things about the internet, and uh, to an extent, it is still the Wild West. But let's go ahead and see what we can find. So I'm gonna type in the word pattern. And that should give me some options inside of Google Images. I'm gonna hit return. And when it takes me to this page, you'll notice that up here it says all, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to images. Now, we want our images to be at least 800 by 800 pixels. And the best way to ensure that is to come over here to where it says tools, click that button, and then go to size, large. Obviously larger than 800 pixels is going to be better. It's always better to downsize than it is to stretch things to make them larger. In fact, quite honestly, it's not really even an option to stretch them and make them larger because we know that that'll make the image look worse. So, essentially now we should be looking at images that are around a thousand pixels or bigger. Uh, things you wanna watch out for <laughs> that I've learned in the, uh, in the process of making this tutorial is, for example, if we come over to something like, let's see, uh, if we go over to this one right here, it says Pexels free download. Now. Pexels is a page where you can download things for free. But if I click on this image, and just to be clear, everything on the left, these are all just thumbnails. You click on the thumbnail you like, and then you come over here, and you can download the image. Now, this image says it's 6,000 6, by 3,000 pixels. I tried to download this earlier, and it gave me a little tiny thumbnail, okay? Meaning that nothing that I could use. The fact is, despite saying 6,000 by 3,000 pixels, the download was not that size. I did the same thing with this wallpaper right here, okay? And I was given a thumbnail. My assumption is that these are some sort of security device that they put, you know, these companies put in to limit your ability to download them from Google and force you to go to their web pages where they sell advertisements to download their stuff. And that's seems fair to me, um, but we're still gonna try to get it from Google. So let's see if we can come over here. And part of the reason we're doing this from Google is just simply that there's just an endless amount of art on here. And if you have access to all of this, it's gonna make getting inspiration a lot easier. It's gonna make finding assets to work with easier. And for this assignment, we don't need to necessarily get the rights to these images, but if you're doing this for a paying client, or you wanna use this for any type of print or broadcast, you need to get the rights. But for simply our second Photoshop uh, assignment, we can kinda of run with what we find here. On top of that, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that a CD cover would generally get printed. Um, not always, but you know, in 2023 it may or it may not. It may just be a free booklet you get when you download it. But the point is that if we were looking for something print worthy, we would wanna make sure that we were looking at images that were 300 DPI or near that. And again, I say DPI, but it, technically it's PPI, pixels per inch. Now for this assignment, 72 pixels per inch, which is the web standard, is gonna be okay. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get a little further down the line. Right now, part of what I want you to learn from this lesson is just simply how to source images from the internet uh, quickly and efficiently. So, if we come over to, say, this image right here. If I click on this one, notice how it's taken up the full window. That's a good sign. If I look over here, it says 2880 by 1800. That's great. That's a nice big image. If I right-click on this and choose Save Image to Downloads, That'll save it onto my computer. And essentially at this point, the first thing I do is I just double check to see if it worked. There's no guarantee that you're gonna get what you download on here. So, you know, I wanna know whether I can move on or not. And so what I do is I click on my desktop 
And what I mean by that is I click in an area where I'm not clicking on an open program. And you'll notice that it takes me to Finder. I can then hit Command N on my keyboard and navigate to my Downloads folder because we chose Save to Downloads. And if I look over here, I can see that we have what appears to be a nice big image. The only other question is whether or not I can open this with Photoshop because this new WebP format appears to be very ubiquitous on the internet. So let's go ahead and see if we can open this using Photoshop. And to do that, I'm gonna right click on the file and choose Open With. And in this case, I would have to go into Other and then go into my Applications folder, which is kind of a hassle. So instead, I'm just gonna grab it and drag it down to the Photoshop icon. Uh, now I have Photoshop Beta, so my icon might look a little different. And there we go. We have opened this up into Photoshop. And you can see down here it says it's 2880 pixels by 1800, and it has 72 pixels per inch. Now here's the thing. I only want this to be 800 by 800. And there's a couple ways I could trim it down. We have a crop tool right here. It's the fourth tool down. You'll also notice that my rulers are turned on. So essentially 800 pixels is like right there and right there. Now if I wanted to grab the crop tool and try to line that up perfectly, I could. If you're not seeing these, you can go to uh, your view and click next to rulers or hit command R. Uh, if I turn that off, you'll see those numbers go away. So as a designer, those rulers are really helpful. Um, but we're not gonna use them in this case. Instead, what I'm gonna do is show you kind of a workaround. I'm gonna go File, New, and I'm gonna create the document at the size I want. In this case, I can just type in width 800 pixels, make sure this doesn't say inches or anything else. <laughs> make sure it's set to pixels. Set it to 800 by 800. In this case, Again, normally for print, you'd be at 300, but in this case, we'll go with 72 because that's the DPI of the images we're gonna get from the internet, at least from Google Images. And the rest of this we can ignore for now. And so we've basically created a custom frame. Let's go ahead and hit Create. And there we go. We have now an 800 by 800 image, but our image is over here. So the easiest way to copy this image from here into here is simply to hit Command A, which selects all, then hit Command C to copy. And if we then come over to this artboard, again, notice how we have two projects open. I can click between them. If I come over to this one and I hit Command V, you'll see that it then pastes that image in into this uh, into this smaller window. Now, you'll notice that it's basically just taking a small portion of this image, and the question might be, well, what if I wanna to try to squeeze more of this pattern into this smaller frame? Well, there's a really important tool in Photoshop, and I'm gonna show it to you right now. It's called the Free Transform Tool, okay? And the key command to enable it is Command T. So let's go ahead and hit that right now and see what happens. So you can see that it's essentially given us a bounding box around our entire image. And if I click in the middle and drag it around, you could see that I can choose what part of that image I want to be in the photo. But also, if I put it up in the corner like this, I can grab this lower corner and start to drag towards it. And you can see that it's now basically scaling the image down. So that's a really cool, really helpful key command. Again, it's Command T. We'll use this one a lot. Now what's cool with this also is that I could put my mouse in the corner and I could rotate the image and maybe scale it back up a little bit to fill in the area and maybe get something kind of cool with that. Again, looks kind of interesting. So that is entirely up to you. If you work with something like a pattern or you have any reason you want to rotate yours, I think I. I'll try something like that right there. We can always go back and change this later. And if I hit return, that's gonna save that, uh, that's going to save that 
uh, change and update it in my uh, in my project here. All right, now let's go ahead and add on to this. So the next thing we're going to do, and for the most part, we're going to kind of follow along with what we did last week in class when we created the greeting card. Um, but I just thought it would be fun to try something a little different. So we're still going to create a background to go behind the title. We need two titles, one title for the name of the band and one title for the name of the record. And we're going to use the same technique. Let's grab the marquee tool and create a new layer by hitting this little plus key down here on the lower right. Let's go ahead and stretch this out here. Okay, so if I hit the plus key, you can now see we have a new layer. And let's go ahead and grab the uh, marquee tool and just drag this out to create an area. Now, we can also use Command T to manipulate this later too, if I want to put it at an angle. So we'll do that in just a minute. But right now I've created this outline and I am now going to hit the B key to get the brush. Now you'll want to come down and pick a color. In this case, let's see, what would be a good color? It might even be cool to sample one of these colors from in here and maybe just tweak it a little bit. I like this uh, sort of teal color, so I'm going to use the eyedropper. When you have the color picker open, if you drag your mouse off the color picker, you automatically get the eyedropper. So if I click and select that color, now I like that, but I'm kind of concerned that if I use that color it might blend in too much, or it might look great. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I'll click OK, and I'm going to make my brush nice and big just to save me time so I'm not trying to fill this in, you know, little one scratch at a time. Instead, I want to do this in one stroke. So I'm going to hit the right bracket key a few times and just fill that in in one or two passes. Now at this point, again, make sure, as long as that's on its own layer, we can change our mind, turn it off, turn it on. We can do lots of things. You'll notice that I still have a selection around that shape. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect that. Okay, I kind of like how that blends in, but I'm thinking because everything on the background is angled, I might like to see that have a little angle to it as well. So if I select that layer and hit Command T, you can now see that I have free transform box. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of drag it a little bit down here. And you notice how that now I have these corners that aren't filled in, so I'm just gonna grab this and pull. But here's the thing. If I grab this little uh, control point here and I start to drag, it is going to make the entire box bigger. Notice if I pull, it's also making it wider and taller. Basically, it's, it's stretching it from all angles, not just width-wise. If I just want to stretch this out, I need to hold down the Shift key. And that's going to allow me to just stretch these without making this any taller from this perspective. All right, there we go. Okay, so again, we'll see how this ends up looking. It might be cool, it might be less than cool. Now, I want you to have two of these backgrounds in here. And rather than creating a new one, one of the fastest ways to deal with this type of stuff is just simply to select the one you have, hit Command J to duplicate it. Now, when it creates a duplicate, the duplicate is put right on top of itself. So I'm gonna hit the V key to give me the selection tool. And now I'm gonna drag this down. Now, if I wanted them both to be at the same angle, I could leave it like that, but I think I wanna kinda of have them going opposite. So I'm gonna hit Command T, and I'm gonna to try to rotate this guy kinda of like that. Eh, something like that looks interesting. Okay, all right, so now I have a background and I have a couple of bars where I can add some text. It looks like I have just the slightest bit of opacity right here. Um, that could have been solved by using a harder a harder brush. If I hit the B key and I go up to the brushes, we have this hardness control. And what happened was I got just a little bit of feathering. You can see it right up there and a little bit right over here. I'm not gonna you know, sweat that. But just be aware that if you wanna fill this in, uh, a hard brush, in fact here I can just come down and fix that. A hard brush 
there we go, is going to make sure that you don't end up with any little areas of opacity. Okay, so we have a background, we have two layers, let's add some text. And so don't worry if your text doesn't match the shape or the angle of your background. Let's just come over here, click the text tool, we'll select the text tool. Nice thing about the text tool is that you don't have to create a new layer, it'll do that for you automatically. So we're just gonna click and I get a piece of dummy text. You'll also notice over here, uh, it says text layer three. So if I double click, and with that dummy text selected, put the text tool over here. Let's type out, uh, this band's gonna be called The Substitutes. All right, and again, it's a little tough to see when your font is the same color as your background. So what I can do is just double click on the T on my layer. Excuse me, that should select everything, there you go. And then I'm gonna go up to color up here because that is the current color of my text and change that to something a little more readable. Let's go ahead and try this pink color. Okay, so you can see that it's hard to type when you can't see what you're typing. Okay, so I've got the text written out there. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this T to select it. And once it's selected, you'll see it's, it's got the highlight over it. And then I can go over here to my transform controls under the character window. And you can actually just click on the T's right here and just click and drag. And it will make your text bigger. In this case, I didn't really know what number to punch in. So I just kind of am eyeballing it. And it looks like about 58 pixels looks good. Then comes the challenge of having to Oh, and after you're done with your text, go up here and click the little plus sign and that will essentially make it so you can modify your text without accidentally changing, uh, you know, clicking on a key command and having it show up on your text. So I'm gonna hit the V key to get the selection tool. It, as long as this layer is selected, I can then drag this around. And the next thing I wanna do is get it to kind of match this angle. And so for that, I'm gonna use command T just like we did a second ago, and free transform this text. The way I find this works best is if I kind of get it a little closer to the edges, like so I can and kind of use that edge as a, as a ruler. And just, there we go. Once I feel like the angle is good, I can hit return and then kind of slide it wherever I want. Okay, so the substitute and Let's call it now. The next thing I need to do is I need to give it a title down here. And again, I could grab the text tool and start over, or if I wanted to, I could just duplicate this text and just change the words in it and move it, which to me seems like a faster option. So I'm gonna select that text and hit Command J to duplicate it. Again, whenever you duplicate something, it's put right on top of itself. So if you hit the V key and grab the selection tool, you can then move the second instance. And notice I get these little bars that kind of let me know, like right there I'm directly underneath these little purple bars on the sides. Uh, and so again, if those are helping you out, it's nice to have those. In this case, uh, I will try to get this relatively even with that one. All right, so I'm gonna hit Command T to free transform it. I'm gonna rotate it this way and then hit Return. And then I'll grab the text tool and I will select this text and change this, uh, let's call this late for class. All right, that's gonna be the name of my record. All right, so we're getting there. We've got our text, we've got our backgrounds. Now let's go ahead and use the marquee tool or any of the selection tools actually I'm sorry last time we used the polygonal lasso tool and let's add let's let's subtract a little area from our background we had the ribbon in our class let's go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna select the first layer here and again if you're not sure which one's which just click the eyeball on and off I'm gonna select the first one and I'm gonna come over and using the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna to click, and I'm gonna create two little triangle cutouts here. 
So notice I just drew a little triangle just like we did in class. I'm going to hit delete. Okay, cool. And I'm going to come over and do the same thing over here. Again, if this tool starts going crazy on you and it's stuck all over the place, just hit escape and that will let you kind of get out from that tool. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. Had I known I was going to do this, I might have done it before I duplicated the shape, which would have spared me having to do it a second time. Now again, if I'm going to go to the bottom layer and do this, I have to make sure I click on that layer first. All right. And one more over here, just for good measure. Okay, and delete. All right, so we've got our logos, we've got our backgrounds. We definitely have some issues with the way this is kind of looking and blending, but we'll fix that in a second. I still have this uh, selection live, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit escape. Excuse me. Uh, if you have a live selection, and I've already deleted the background, you can hit Command D to deselect it. Okay, so I've got this issue where my my ribbon is kind of blending into itself and it looks a little weird. Let's fix that. And the way I'm gonna fix that is by selecting this layer and coming down to the effects layer. Now, you are entitled to choose any effect that looks good for your project. In my case, I think either an outer glow or maybe a drop shadow will give me the look, will give me a little separation between my ribbon and the background. So let's try outer, uh, excuse me. Well, let's see, there's outer glow. I clicked on it and by default, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. I'm definitely not knocking it. I like how it's blending the colors. All of a sudden my ribbon is separate from the, you know, similar colors. It was overlapping. And if I use outer glow for this, then I could use drop shadow on the font if I wanted to. So let's, uh, let's give it a try. Now you can see that essentially I could choose the color. Right now it's defaulting to this lime green. If I wanted to change that to say like light blue, that's kind of interesting. I like how it's blending with the, with the darker colors or maybe red. That's kind of interesting as well. Hmm. Tough decision to make here. Let's see. I feel like I want to do something that's slightly more muted. Uh, throwing a fluorescent color on top of this just feels a little weird given that everything's sort of a uh, pastel. Okay, let's go ahead and just select an orange and go with that. Yeah, orange looks fine. All right. And again, there's options here. I could come in and adjust the spread as well as the opacity. I'm noticing there is a little artifact up here that I... Oh, I must have had the wrong layer selected when I was filling in that little issue. That's exactly what it was. Because I can see that the, overglow, the outer glow is affecting this background layer, but it's also affecting this right here, which just means that I had this selected when I drew that. I can fix that and I'll show you how. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, keep this nice and soft. Keep the size right about there. Kind of like a... A, a, a low spread and a large size, I think, gives a nice blend. Okay, so let's go ahead and if, if you look at this thumbnail, I can actually see there's a little splotch of color right up there in the corner. So with this layer selected, I'm gonna come over and grab the eraser tool. And it does just what it says it does. If I make it nice and big, I can erase that issue there. All right, now we've added this low, this outer glow to the Bottom, let's go ahead and add it to the top as well. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna right click on this outer glow effect and I'm gonna choose copy layer style. All right, and then I'll select the layer beneath it and I'll right click and choose paste layer style. There we go. Okay, now that's it's looking interesting and let's go ahead and Throw a little drop shadow or something on this text to make it pop just a little bit more. So if I go up to my text, let's start off with the bottom layer, or excuse me, the top layer. We'll go down to effects and we'll choose a drop shadow. All right, there it is. 
Okay, so right there, that's okay. It's not exactly what I want. Kind of looks like a, a black stroke. I'm thinking, let's try to angle it down a little bit. Let, actually, that's putting it up. Let's go ahead and adjust the angle that way. There we go. And let's see, I'm gonna increase the, I'm gonna decrease the spread and increase the size. And just sort of see what looks good. There we go. If I increase the angle a little bit, then I can kind of get it so it's not all the way around the text. And then I can start to maybe decrease the, I like the spread up, but I'm gonna put the size down pretty low. Okay. And I might increase the opacity because currently it's set to 100. I might drop that down to like 50. I don't want it to be too heavy handed. That looks better. Okay, that looks good. So I can click OK, and then same process we just did. I'm going to click on that drop shadow, right click on it, and choose, excuse me here, let's go drop shadow, right click, copy layer style, and then I'm gonna select the late for class, and right click and choose apply layer, paste layer style, excuse me. Okay, there we go, we're getting there. And now I want you to do something, we need some sort of an adjustment layer on the background or potentially a layer above everything. So let's go down to our adjustment layers which are gonna be right down here on this little half circle or half filled in circle. And if we click that, uh, again, remember adjustment layers are put on their own layer. So you don't have to select a layer first. I'm thinking something like, Oh, I don't know. Let's try it. We can see what invert does. It's going to be pretty heavy. Yeah, as you can see. But again, I could grab this and I could drag it below the text. And then I could even take it and put it below the, the ribbons. And now we start to get something that's a little more interesting. I could also select the adjustment layer and go up to opacity and see what it looks like at 50%. Okay, weird, pretty pretty muted. 82%, not too bad, but it definitely tweaks the overall color and I gotta say I kinda like the overall color. So I'm gonna take this invert and I'm gonna drag it down to the trash. And instead, let's go back one more time and let's try something like posterize. All right, and again, Remember that all of these effects have uh, controls that will be right up here in the properties panel. So if I increase the posterize, let's take it down to like 20, see what we get. And again, sometimes it's nice to turn it on and off. Notice we're not seeing a huge difference, just a slight shift in color. Let's bump it up to like 50. Still not seeing a huge difference. Seeing it less, let's go ahead and lower it down to 10. Back. let's lower it down to like five. All right, and again, I'm gonna turn the eyeball on and off. I kinda like that, that seems pretty cool. Okay, so for the final thing, let's go ahead and go down to our adjustment layers, and let's pick a, let's pick a vibrance uh, adjustment layer. Now, just to be clear, you don't have to use any of the adjustment layers I'm using. I'm just showing you these um, so you can you know, see what they do. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase my vibrance just a little bit. Just tends to make the colors punch a little bit more. And I think that looks good right there. And so for this case, I think that's gonna do it for me. Let's go ahead and, oh, you know what? It really should be the substitutes. Let's go ahead and hit the text tool, select that layer, and I'm just gonna add an S. And then I'm going to hit the check button so that it disables my text. And then I'm gonna hit the V key and try to center this a little more accurately in between these uh, cutouts on the ribbon. And this one luckily looks okay. Could maybe tweak it just a little bit to the right, but I think that should do right there. All right, and in this case, I'm starting to question that 
outer glow, if I really like that or not. I'm almost wondering if the drop shadow that I used for the text might look better. It might, so let's find out. Again, the, the reason I do this is because all I have to do is come over here and copy the drop shadow. So if I, use, if I right click on it and choose copy layer style, I can then select either of the ribbons and right click and choose paste layer style. Okay, that's not bad. I kind of like that. I might prefer that actually. Again, let's paste it on here. It adds a nice sort of three-dimensional feel. Now the next question is, then maybe I don't need it on the text because two drop shadows right on top of each other is kind of pushing. All right. I think I like it better on the ribbon than I like it on the text. But the text now feels a little bit too, uh, too light. So let's go ahead and, again, I'm just going to go ahead and select my text. Double click on it. Excuse me. Where's my text here? Huh. And I could always go over here and push this into a darker color. Again, you have to double click it so that it selects all of the text. Let's grab the text tool and double click that again. There we go. There we go. I think that looks a little better. Now, I'm running into a problem here because my bottom text, it says late for class. You'll notice that one of these is showing up as a text layer, and this layer appears to have been rasterized, meaning that it's no longer a text layer, meaning that I couldn't use the text tool to come back and adjust this. Um, in this case, honestly, the quickest way that I can think to fix that issue is just to grab this layer drag it to the trash, reselect my text layer, hit Command J. Again, now notice that I have T's next to both of these. I will show you how you can convert a text layer into a non-text layer, uh, but we'll do that later. So I'm just going to essentially hit Command T to rotate this one more time. Get it as close to that sort of as I can, and then we'll bring it down here, and we'll hit return, and then we'll grab the text tool, double click on this text layer to select it, and change this back to late for class. All right, and then we'll grab the selection tool and just slide it over. Now you'll notice that I didn't hit the plus, I didn't hit the check mark sign on there. Uh, if you do click off, it will sort of solidify the text. Um, all right, and at that point, I think this looks all right. Again, for the sake of this assignment, we've added a couple adjustment layers. We've added some uh, layer styles uh, to our, you know, the layer styles being the drop shadow. Uh, I think everything looks nice, pops nicely, and you know, relatively simple, but it was a good opportunity to try out some of our new skills. Now let's just do one last thing. Let's go ahead and grab the marquee tool. I am going to, actually better yet, let's grab the polygonal lasso tool. And I am going to just do a random shape that maybe matches up with this more or less. Okay. So I've made this selection, but it's clear that I want to make it clear that I haven't selected a layer yet. In fact, what I really want is I want to put this on a new layer. So I got a little ahead of myself. I made the selection, but that's okay because if I come down to the new layer button, which is right next to the garbage can, it'll give me a new layer. Now with that selection live, I am going to select a color, something other than blue, maybe, uh, yeah, let's go with a, a magenta. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to hit the B key for my brush. And I'm going to hit the right bracket key and make my brush really big so that I can do this. OK. I'll hit Command D to deselect the selection. And I will hit the V key to get back to my selection tool. Now what I plan on doing with this is dragging this all the way down to the bottom just above the background. 
And then I want to, with this layer selected, lower the opacity to like 10 or maybe a little higher. Let's see. Okay, something like that. Again, it's giving us just some interesting color contrast. And at this point, I can decide if I like it like that. If I don't, I can hit Command T because that's going to give me that free transform tool and I could make it narrower. Again, notice it's making the whole thing narrower. Maybe I drag it off to one side. And if I want it to kind of match the pattern, I might do that. So notice that I, I've got it so big I can't even see the control points. So I'm going to hit Command minus. That scales everything down and now I can grab this and just kind of get it lined up. And it just adds a little bit of color variation. I like that. I think it looks good. Uh, it's interesting. Again, the, the beauty of CD covers is there's really no wrong answer. So it's just a great opportunity to come in and mess around and uh, see what you can come up with and try out some of the new tools that we've learned. Uh, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So now let's go ahead and save it. Now, remember, we need two things here. We need a PSD that has all of our layers. That is a working file. We never turn those in. We never give those to clients. Instead, we're going to export a JPEG of this. So I need both of those. So I can go ahead and hit File, Save As. And you can see it wants to save to my Creative Cloud. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I prefer to save it on my hard drive where I can find it. And let's give it a title. As you can see, I've got a little spinning wheel here. Hopefully that uh, goes away at some point. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to save this to my Miracosta Mat 110 folder. Make sure to give it the right title. We'll call this CD Cover Tutorial and save. So this, again, this is going to be the PSD. This is going to be the large file that I do not want to email someone unless they need to actually work on the project. Now, if I want to upload this to Instagram or email it to a friend, what I want to do is go File, Export, okay? Now, I could do a quick PNG or I can go to Export As. Let's go ahead and do that. Under Export As, I have the ability to resize it Again, right, currently it's 800 by 800. I want to leave it at that size. But if I wanted to make it smaller for the sake of a smaller file size, I could resize it here. I also have to, I can also choose format. If I go to PNG, I prefer JPEG in this case. And one thing you can do is look at the file size over here. Right now, if I save this at top quality JPEG, it's going to be basically about a half a megabyte. 495, 4,000, excuse me, 439.5 kilobytes. If I save it as a PNG, notice that I get about 100 kilobytes more. Not a big difference. In fact, it's negligible. So quite honestly, in this case, for this art, it really doesn't matter. There are reasons why we'll save things as PNGs in the future, but we'll discuss that later. Uh, let's go ahead and pick JPEG, set the quality to the highest. We're going to go 800 by 800, scale 100, and uh, don't need my copyright and contact info on this one. I'm going to leave it at RGB, sRGB color space, and let's go ahead and click export. And let's give this a title. Let's call it CD uh, Substitutes. Substitutes. All right, and again, save it to my hard drive. So I'll navigate to my Miracosta hard drive and click Save. And with that, we are done. But let's take just a second here and let's navigate to that hard drive and just take a quick look at what we created. So if we come over here and we do List View and we open up to Date Modified, there is our two projects. Now I want to be clear, one of these, the PSD, is 3.6 megabytes. It's not a huge file. 
again, 800 by 800 at 72 DPI uh, is not that big. But if I was doing a print file with a 300 DPI image at 11 by uh, eight and a half, this would probably be upwards of anywhere from 30 to 100 megabytes. So we've created a very small image uh, at four, 420 kilobytes for our JPEG and about a eight times larger image for our PSD. Hit spacebar, you can get a quick, quick view. And so again, we'll always turn in our JPEGs in this class unless otherwise instructed, always export your work as a JPEG. All right, that'll do it.